There really is nothing quite like a handcrafted home. A house in which someone has poured an abundance of love and hard work into truly making the space their own. And that's exactly the case with this next spectacular tiny house that we're about to visit. Hey Rada, how are you? Hi, good, thank you. Lovely to meet you. G'day yeah, Phil, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, welcome. Thank you very much. I am so excited to see the beautiful home that you've created here. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. welcome. So, first of all, can you tell me how it is that you actually came to be living in a tiny house? Well, it's a long story, but um, initially I was a little bit doubting the, the whole idea. But uh, Phil was the visionary. He was the person who really saw it as a really good option for us and did a workshop about three years ago on building a tiny house. So after that, he really came up very inspired to build one for us. About a year after that, we started sourcing materials and building it one stage at a time, one step at a time. And here we are living in it. So Phil, when you first saw tiny houses and when you attended the workshop, what was it that really made you feel like a tiny house was the right decision for you? I'd been looking, uh, where well, we'd both been looking at sort of people living in yurts and buses and things like that, uh, and just looking for a lifestyle that I thought we could afford. And when I saw a wooden tiny house, I felt like this is um, like a good compromise between what I had grown up with, like a wooden house, and a small space that we could afford to build. That's right, because you're no stranger to working with wood, are you? Yeah, I've been building musical instruments for years. Now my business is building instruments for schools and music therapists and um, selling at markets and festivals and fairs and things like that. So I had been learning a lot about wood, although I'd never built anything this large before and structural and everything. <laughs> had to learn a lot. The decision to own a tiny house was basically the best decision for us at this point of life as we are both self-employed and we have jobs that we absolutely love but that are a little bit unconventional. So now we can live without the um, stress of having a mortgage and without having to fit into a specific way of working and paying off. We built this from scratch without any debt. So I feel that this is amazing and it gives us so much freedom now to, uh, to travel, but also to, to do things that we really love doing and mm. prioritize that over um, the financial stress. And can you tell me a little bit about the style of the home? What you see here is these Matai um, weatherboards and this is some of the first stuff that we collected, scavenging around for materials we could use and we found online a house that had burnt down. And I went round there and perhaps stupidly, but very adventurously bought this huge pile of very heavy, very thick, uh, covered with lead paint uh, weatherboards. And I was very excited about it. <laughs> and uh, so these, uh, the weatherboards underneath the paint. Our the initial paint idea was to recycle as much as possible. So a lot of what you see is recycled. The front doors are recycled, the window, the weatherboards. You will see that inside there is a lot of recycled materials, which was not less work at all. It was much more work, but it gave us something which is quite unique and something that we can't get um, in the store. Something that is really ours and uh, we've touched every single corner of every single wooden board and that makes our house really ours, I think. Really nice timber joinery here as well. Yeah, we, we had to spend a lot of time uh, renewing a lot of all these windows. <laughs> sanding, a lot of sanding. Yeah, um, obviously none of them was yellow when we got them. <laughs> So yeah. there was a lot of paint stripping and sanding and yeah, it was fun. And what size is the tiny house? So this is 2.4 wide, 7.8 long and 4.25 high. And you really have found such a charming parking spot for your home as well. We have. We have been quite lucky. Uh, we live in town and still are surrounded by 
a patch of native bush and a lot of fruit trees, avocado trees, walnut trees, which makes it very homey and yeah, it really feels very much like we are home now. And I see here as well, you've set up the outdoor bathtub and the hammock. Yeah. We love to spend time outdoors and um, living in Hawke's Bay, we can spend pretty much a big chunk of the year, we can be outside. So we have an outdoor stable and we have nice long baths in the evenings outside under the stars. Um, the hammock is our chill area uh, for the hot days. That's the shadiest spot by the creek. Yeah, um, we like to spread around and live a big chunk of the time outside. Brilliant. Well, the home looks absolutely beautiful from the outside. I can already see that you've done such a wonderful job here, and it makes me incredibly excited to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Yeah, of course. Come All right, in. thank you. This is absolutely beautiful. And immediately upon entering this home, you're just hit by all of this gorgeous timber and this incredible feeling of warmth and hominess that it resonates. Yeah, that was the look that we really were after. Phil is a woodworker, so obviously he knew quite a lot about sourcing wood and working with wood. Uh, but also we just wanted to have our own cozy cabin. Uh, we've been traveling a lot all through our lives, so we wanted a home that really felt cozy, grounding, uh, welcoming and beautiful to spend time in. And you certainly have created that here. Inside this home, there really is this incredible combination of all of these beautiful different kinds of timber. Can you talk to me a little bit about what these are and where you source them? Yeah, okay. For example, the floor, uh, that was an old industrial floor. It's original growth Oregon pine. It has a lot of holes filled, as you can see. Kind of looks like the deck of a really old ship or something like that. It does look a bit like that, doesn't it? Yeah. And then the walls? So the walls, uh, we've got Rimu panelling on the walls. So from this line that way, it was from a house that was being demolished, the same house as many of the other objects come from. And then uh, from this side to the right, that's just a different source that was in like beams from underneath a classroom in the local schools. Yeah. And then this beautiful redwood ceiling here, that's just such an incredible feature. Yeah, we've got redwood all through the house and it was a really awesome find because it's from the local mountain, Tanata. So this was some, some redwood that someone had milled and uh, stored for about 15 years and they weren't ever going to use it. So even though it was unused timber, it was still a bit of a salvage job because we kind of saved it from being forgotten about. And what a wonderfully comfortable lounge area you've created over here. Yeah, so our day bed, it's probably the favorite spot, really. Like that spot there gets used a lot, sitting, reading a book. Uh, it's also a single bed mattress, so we could sleep there. Um, well, one of us could. <laughs> and yeah, it's lovely to look out the window onto a foresty area. Yeah, we love the window. It was a great find and uh, we've just been so happy to have that exposure, that um, light coming through and the feel when we sit on the day bed that uh, we are surrounded by nature. Yeah, just seated between the, the window and the French doors makes us feel like we are outdoors. Absolutely. And it's great to see that you've built in lots of storage here as well for books up there and all these other miscellaneous items down here. Yeah, we've got a uh, great storage space there underneath the day bed and lots of little places to put books and other items. I really like the puppet you've got up there as well. He looks like he's got a story. Yeah, that's Frank. I made him while on a workshop in the Czech Republic. Very cool. Well done. <laughs> and then, of course, the fireplace here as well. That's always a welcome addition. Yeah, that was uh, one of the things on the list to make the house cozy. And once we put that in, which was just uh, this winter, we had ticked all of the major items that we wanted to make our house cozy and it heats up the house really, really well. Yeah, we're happy with it. And then behind us here, we have your kitchen and this beautiful little dining area that you've created. Yeah, um, that was probably my first kind of uh, serious piece of woodwork other than instruments. I wanted to build this beautiful table out of some matai timber that I had found and put a little like pirate leg on it so that we could kind of slip in and out of the sitting areas. And then my cajon is there as another seating area. 
That is very cool. Brings a new meaning to musical chairs, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. What do you reckon? Can you, uh, can you give it a spin for us? Yeah, I totally can. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Ah, I want one now. <laughs> They fit in a tiny house very well. They sure do. What a great addition. And extra seating as well. I just love that. <laughs> and this kitchen, again, all of the timber in here just brings in so much wonderful character. Yep, more Rimu and a whole bunch of other things that I find uh, throughout my business. Nice, beautiful bits of wood that I can add as little highlights. And um, I'm really proud of that little part there where we made the the wall also into uh, shelves at the same time, and it's live edge uh, cedar shelves. Gorgeous, that really is a wonderful feature. And then it's really nice as well how you've created it galley style, so you've got prep area and cooking over one side, and then you've got the kitchen sink over the other. Yeah, the setup of the kitchen turned out to be really, really good. Um, there is plenty of space, I would say there is more space in this kitchen than uh, in the kitchen that we used to have when we lived in a flat in town. Just everything is positioned so well that um, it just makes it so smooth to cook or to prepare food or to, yeah, to move around. It's great to see that you've fit a full-size fridge there under the stairs and then you've got the full-size gas cooker as well. Yeah, I think that was uh, a really good decision not to compromise on fridge space or our ability to prepare food because that's what makes a home homely, really, being able to store our food and to prepare it. Uh, so we're really happy with the choice of uh, stove. We cook on gas, which is um, a very good option, I think, for a tiny house. And right next to you, I really love this branch that you've used <laughs> as a support for the sleeping loft. Yeah. This is a branch that we took out of a forest after a storm. Uh, it had dropped onto the path and Radha said, oh, what about that one? Because I was looking for a post. And I was like, oh, that looks really heavy. And we sort of lugged it. For like, a few kilometers on our shoulder. <laughs> and then dried it for a year, <laughs> took all the bark off, and it's perfect. What a gorgeous feature. And then I've just spied your projector up here. Yeah, that's right. That's a screen that folds out and we can sit on the day bed and watch a movie in the evening. As you can see, we don't really have a TV. Uh, neither of us is a fan of screens. So we try to um, have our home entertainment in a, in a different way. <laughs> I really like that because it really does turn watching TV into such an experience when you do it that way, doesn't it? It does. And is that your bathroom back there? Yeah, yeah. let's have a look. Cool, let's take a look there. Yeah. Oh, again, this is just so lovely with how you've used all of this beautiful timber in here. Yeah, this is a space where we really wanted to save every little inch of space because we knew that we would benefit from it further down the house. So we found a, a beautiful old shub that we fitted in here and it's become our shower sort of bath and uh, a little composting toilet area here my wardrobe and uh, this area here for a whole lot of other things and this old cupboard that we found in a demolished house and it fits in the wall. Yeah and I love the pocket door that you've used here as well it looks like there's actually some charring on here this has got to yeah. have a story. Yeah so that's from the same house as the weatherboards so a house that burnt down a really old house and it was totally charred and I think the guy threw it in for free when we bought that pile of matai. Maybe he felt sorry for us. <laughs> and uh, yeah, on both sides it's really charred and I think Radha sanded it a lot for, for many hours um, and we oiled it up and it looked really great. Yeah. And how are you both finding the composting toilet? It's working really great. I don't even know how we've been flushing all through our lives previously. It's such an amazing way to deal with waste. There is a book that really inspired us, the Human Your Handbook. And uh, after reading that, we got really inspired to uh, compost. Yeah, it gave us the confidence that we could do it. It helped us understand the process. That book is more of a revolutionary manifesto than it is a book on composting toilets, isn't it? <laughs> Joseph it Jenkins, is. I think, is he really makes you feel like composting toilets can change the world when you yeah. read that book. Definitely. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. 
And then your sleeping loft is upstairs. Yeah, should we take a look? Let's do it. After you. Thanks. Again, this is such a lovely and very spacious loft you've created here. Yeah, I think this is the result of saving little bits of space with each decision. By the time we get to the loft, we've got this really high peak right where we need it, at the top of the stairs, and it works really well. Definitely. It's amazing to be able to actually stand, because from one of the um, stairs, you can actually be comfortably standing and changing, or um, changing the bed sheets, or yeah, just maneuvering around the space. And you really have created a lot of storage area up here as well. Yeah, that little corner at the end there, we put a couple of big chests in where we can put bedding and winter clothes and things like that. In this area at the end, we've added like a few extra planks to make the loft extra long. So this is another extra space for when uh, one of us is using the downstairs space. This is sort of a quiet area up here. It almost feels like a second room. And also not having windows on the edges so that every wall you can push stuff back. And then we have that beautiful um, skylight window. Yeah, so the skylight was something that I really was dreaming about having in, in our house. It was one of the few items that we both knew, but then we still made it our own because Phil ended up carving out this very beautiful um, outline of our star constellations onto it, so that when we lay in bed, uh, we can actually see that. What a lovely addition. Phil, what a charm are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so how long have you both been living in the home now? It's been one year since we moved in. And throughout the year we've been uh, gradually finishing it all off. So uh, probably in the, in the way that you see it now, uh, it's been looking like this since April. Yeah. And obviously in this build there is a tremendous amount of work that's gone into reconditioning all of these second-hand materials. But can you tell me a little bit about the cost that was involved in building this home? Yeah, it cost about 50 grand uh, to build this home. And I think that the price is only due to the fact that Phil could actually invest a lot of his time, so we didn't have to commission anyone to build it for us. So it's probably another few thousand dollars in work hours, that's for sure, but yeah. that, that's just the price, the, the cost of materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think $50,000 for a home of this finish and quality really is astounding. And as you say, that is absolutely testament to the fact that you have poured so many hours of your own labor definitely. into making this possible. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I definitely felt that interesting transition between the construction site where I had spent every day for months and months and a couple of years really uh, thinking in a construction mindset and then the day that we transitioned into it being a home was very very strange for me mm. uh, because everywhere I looked I saw with a different kind of mindset and to get into a homely mindset actually took uh, weeks and weeks and that first day I remember walking across the lawn and just sort of freezing and Radha kind of had to help me get into the house <laughs> and that whole first evening was very emotional and I had to play a lot of music and walk around the house almost like doing a ritual to change the space from just a construction site a construction into uh, a yeah, like a home. <laughs> yeah every now and then we would just pause and look around and feel so grateful for having such a beautiful home and yeah as you said so proud of all the work that we've done to get here for us it's been a really big journey in our relationship in our personal lives to come to this point of actually owning our own house so um, it's definitely been a journey filled with a lot of fulfillment and uh, and joy well this really is such a beautiful home Everywhere I look, I can see all of the love and hard work that you've both poured into this space. Thank you both oh, so much for sharing it with me. Yeah. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. <laughs> Phil and Rada really have done such an incredible job with this home. Every now and then you'll enter a house and just be completely struck by the craftsmanship. And that is exactly what has happened here in this house. And when you mean the craftsmanship, you mean that I am very lovely crafted, no? 
Frank, you are also a very, very well-crafted puppet. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you a secret. I really love to be in this house with Phil and Rada. It is so good. Yay. I bet you do. You are incredibly lucky to get to live here. Yes, I am. Well, that was a lot of work uh, today, having uh, you in the house, uh, there were five people and... Uh, I know, people watch YouTube and they just think this stuff is easy, right? Yes, it is very hard for us. There's a lot of work that goes into making these videos happen. Bryce, can I please come with you on a tour of the tiny houses? You know, I really feel like that would help me a lot because as a presenter, there's a lot of pressure that gets put on me to make the show yes, work. And I just yes. feel like having you there would make things so much easier. Yes, and there is some uh, chemistry, no? Between I, us. There is definitely chemistry. And you just bring this like whole level of charisma to the show that I just don't feel like I can pull off on my own. Yes, I feel the same about you. I think let's make this happen. Yes. Put it there. All right. All right. Frank and I will see you next week. <laughs>